This microphone from 512 Audio is one that, I don't know, the design has kind of grown on me. The audio quality is really quite nice on it. Solid, feels really solid, nice and weighty build. But it's got that very strange problem that when you handle it, it makes a sort of tone. You just sort of gently tap it and it makes a tone, which is very odd for a microphone to do. I mean, to have resonant frequencies within the body itself that create an actual tone, which happens to be in, in the key of E, I think. It's the E key. <laughs> I just went through the piano and had a look to see which key it was. Anyway, I thought maybe if we uh, had a look inside the mic, maybe we can just see something that might be causing it, or whether it is just the body itself, or why, or just just any possible reason why this might be making a noise like that. Anyway, let's have a look inside and see um, whether or not we can find anything. This might not be the way to get into a mic like this. I really don't know. I'm not too worried at this stage. So it's just an Allen key here on the bottom to open this up. I don't know if don't know if this is unscrewing the whole lot or whether it's just unfortunately I have a tendency um, I see people take things apart on, on YouTube and I sort of think it is amazing how they get them back together again. I've seen just you know someone who isn't an expert like someone like Tecmo and you know he's not an expert in in like electronics and stuff, but he takes stuff apart and manages to get it all back together. It's something that I've never been able to do. I've unfortunately ruined many things by taking it apart. Gosh, even just that that piece weighs quite a lot. Um, uh, the whole, ah, uh, good, okay. So the whole body, whole body comes off like that. Okay, it's a good job I'm videoing this, right, isn't it? Because I know, so that I assume, so that just slips in there like that. Don't know why. Why has it got those in? No idea why it has those, but there we go. There's the there's the aluminium body. You can see where it's spray painted on the uh, on the inside there. I'm, I'm afraid I'm just going to have to sniff this. <laughs> it smells like an electronics project kit. <laughs> so is it is it this? Is is this itself? It does it. I'm telling you what. I'm going to plug it in like this because I want to see whether or not it still makes the noise with without the body fitted. So let's just have a listen. Whoa! God, it picks up some noise. I'm going to have to just turn this down. Ooh, God, that. Picks up some hum. Wow. You can't hear that, unfortunately, but as I move my hand backwards and forwards, I can completely shield it like that. But that's an unbelievable amount. Where's that coming from? It seems to be coming from the camera, I think. God, that is, that's unbelievable. So what I'm doing here is I'm just tapping it in various places to see. See, it doesn't make the noise. It doesn't have that. Does it? Maybe it does still a little bit, yeah, but it's unusable like that because that's horrendous noise coming in on it. Wow. I must admit, I wouldn't have thought that it would pick up so much noise without the body attached. I, obviously, the body might be a necessary part for shielding, but I didn't think it would be quite that essential. But let's have a look at the mic anyway. So there's one side of the board. Nothing uh, particularly interesting on there, I wouldn't wouldn't have thought. But uh, again, I say, if, if you know more about how microphones are constructed and made, you might want to come back to me with uh, with something telling me about whether that looks okay or not. And let's have a look at the other side of the board. There's the other side of the board. Now, my problem is, of course, I, I know what the parts, I know what the bits are, some of them, 
but I don't know what they do, so no help at all. All I can say is that that looks like it could adjust the gain on something, because as for what, I don't know. This is a lesson in how to destroy a £200 microphone. It's gonna, does this fit? Yeah, so it looks like the metallic body is there purely for shielding. Is that normal? Is that normal on any condenser mic that the body would be entirely to shield the boards inside and prevent hum? Because it seems like it's entirely unusable without it. Um, not that you would want to use a microphone without its, uh, without its body. Last one out. I don't want to wreck this microphone. Appreciate probably not using the best screwdriver to do this either. Okay, let's have a look what we got. Is that gonna come out? Oh, I don't have to. Now, unfortunately, I need to take out. Oh, no, I don't. That will come out. There we go. So there we have our beautiful microphone. Isn't it amazing that that's what it is that picks up your voice? I hope it's more use to you than it is to me looking at this, but all I can say is that it does appear that it is the body itself. It's largely this piece that causes the, the, the noises in the microphone, which surely could be fixed. I, I don't want to plug this in like this because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of frightened this is just going to cause unbelievable hum. But uh, let me just drop my level on my preamps right down here. I'll just plug this oh plug this in wow that's really really that's a uh, extreme There's no noise on it. There's no, I mean, there is hum on it, but there's no uh, actual, none of the doing, doing, doing noise that it had before. So uh, yeah, it seems, it seems like that is caused by, seems like that's caused by this. Now, let's try and put it back together again. It doesn't seem too hard, does it? But um, I'll probably still get it wrong. Oh, interesting, you can see on the inside here, if you uh, look at that there, you can see there's also, so as well as have it, you've got this shield here, you've got the mesh, kind of a very random sort of mesh there on the outside, but you've also got another um, shield as well. So it's actually protected by a couple of different levels of um, mesh, if you like, and, and it still suffers, you know, still suffers with plosives. Uh, so that's why you need, obviously, to fit that in front, which is, again, another double layer, plastic and uh, metal. But, um, yeah, so it's interesting to see what they've d actually done there on the inside to protect. But uh, all this, it's, it's, it's solid stuff. It uh, seems nicely made. So let's get it back together.
It would be good if I used a, a better screwdriver. One with some kind of magnetism would help. seen people take watches apart there's a, a channel i watch on youtube youtube what wristwatch revival it's called i think and he takes watches apart and it is absolutely stunning the um the fine motor control that's required in your hands and you don't really appreciate it when you're watching it because you're seeing it all kind of macroed up and uh, you everything looks a little bit bigger than it is. I don't think it's easy to appreciate how small the pieces are and I'm just doing something here with pretty big screws and I'm finding it fiddly. I can't even imagine what it's like to get hands on with a watch in that way. So I must admit, I would like to try. It's just not mine. Okay. There we go. Good. Yeah, again, I'm using a screwdriver that's just going to wreck these screws here. It's just the only one I have here at the moment with me. That's attached good. That's attached well enough, I think. So now let's attach this to here. Now I don't know if there's any particular way that this goes. I don't think there is. I don't think it makes any difference, does it? Which way around this goes. They're both, both doing the same thing on here. So yeah, I don't think that makes any difference. Okay, so just those last two uh, screws with the Allen key. They seem like they're lined up. It's only a six screw job, isn't it? Easy. Tighten. Well, it's pretty much a hard stop on those when they uh, when they tighten. Yep, a definite stop there, and that's good. Right now, let's plug it in. See whether that hum's gone from the body being fitted. Two, two. Yeah, it's got no gain on that. Let's bring some gain up. Yeah, that's all fine now. That's working fine. Where's it? Where's it picking the hum up from? See, I don't know, but um, it does seem to be fairly susceptible. This microphone to. Uh, yep, yeah, it's working okay. Good. So there we are. A look inside the uh, 512 audio skylight microphone just to see what causes this uh, little tapping noise when the, the kind of tone when you tap the body of the microphone and it does appear to be the body itself not something on the inside that's just been kind of left to vibrate or resonate or whatever you want to call it 
because uh, it doesn't seem to do it without the body. But unfortunately, the body is most definitely needed for shielding. As uh, as when I took it off there, the hum on the mic was just unbelievable. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this little uh, video. I will speak to you soon.